Well, Marcus, I've never been to an indoor farm before, so please tell me about it. Well, this used to be a gymnasium, uh -huh. um, and then USDA gave us funding to start this. It was a research project. Okay. And so we built it out, but now it has morphed into this community center, and we're helping farmers do their startups. That's so fascinating. So it's agribusiness startup is, is what we're doing now. So each of these chambers is a different farm. So each of these chambers is a different farm. And this first chamber is one that we actually use for ourselves. We do all of our seeding in here. Oh, let's go take a peek. I love yeah. looking at seeds. So welcome to the seeding room. Uh, we seed the plants for the indoor systems, for the gardens outside. We do growing seedlings for, this is some of our contract work. Uh -huh. So we provide the plants for several of the community gardens in, the, in, in town, as well as farmers, and we even some in Richmond. That's fantastic. Who does all the sowing of the seed? Because that takes a lot of time. People don't realize it. This is the volunteers. Oh, they come in. God and, bless um, them. <laughs> yeah, because that's very tedious. You know, we have tweezers because some of the seeds are very, very tiny. And you want one seed to each tray as, as much as possible. We only have two staff. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest all comes from volunteers. Um, that's amazing. That's a lot so, of work to be done. Once the trays are sown, do you have a seed starting chamber or? So we do have a propagation chamber that we built uh, a DIY project. Mm -hmm. Those things cost thousands of dollars. We built ours on the, on the shoestring budget and it gives us a 95% humidity, 80 degrees inside. Uh, and it allows the plants, the seeds to actually pop within 24 to 72 hours. Can they don't have a choice but to germinate with that. Right. <laughs> and so that helps speed up production. So you get them germinated. We get the trays together, throw them in there for a couple of days. They start germinating. Then we get them under the lights. And then it's just a few days and you can get the stuff turned around. I would imagine lighting is the most important component of being in, in an indoor farm. It is. Um, you know, when we were doing strictly research, that was the bulk of what we were studying all the different types of lights. So we've got high pressure sodium, LED, we've got T5s, T8s, we've got every type of grow light possible that we've experimented with in here. Mm -hmm. um, we've even got those that you can select the, the spectrum that you want. Fantastic. Uh, because we found you know, many plants need different spectrums at different parts of the, during the growing cycle. And so you can select which spectrum to give them. You've really fine-tuned this to a true science and an art. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's, agriculture is a science, and so many people miss that point, that agriculture is a science. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you've got some other chambers, too. So. Yeah, so let's go take a look at the grow chambers. Okay. See the plants in action. See where they go. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So each of these grow chambers is run by a different farmer in the program. Uh, this first one... It's an aquaponics unit, so oh. we use float trays, and it's all fed by fish poop. It's so green. It's, they're very healthy. Yeah, well, it's all about the poop. It sure is. <laughs> so now the fish are over here. My, you can we, have a lot in here. We have enough to do 400 fish. Uh, we're not running 400 fish right now, but we use tilapia mm -hmm. because you can market the, the fish as well. Absolutely. But to make up the difference, we use goldfish because they provide just as much poop, if not oh. more. You know, I, don't, I can take that because I had goldfish for my girls when they were little and I was always cleaning that tank. Mm. They sure do poop. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's take a, this, this other chamber here. Yes, I'm curious, what's here? So this is a, mostly exotic greens. Most of these are going to the local restaurants, farmer's market, and to a couple of sites in Richmond. And so we're excited that, um, you know, the farmer has come in and put in his own investment. He built this system. He's planning to expand and maximize the, the space in here. So next time you come, you'll see plants growing up along the walls. He's got some Dutch buckets he's about to put in. And so we're excited about the, the possibilities in here. Well, I can see that we've got some horizontal farming, but what about the vertical farming? If we planted these outside, it would take 60 days before you could harvest them. In here, it's 30, 32 days. Uh -huh. Because That's they're amazing. constantly getting fed nutrients and the perfect lighting. Uh -huh. and so they just grow. So what's the media that these seedlings are growing in? Because I noticed in the growing chamber that it was a specific medium. Well, we use rock wool in most of these systems. There's several different types of hydroponic media that you can use, but we like the rock wool. Uh, price point and the time of life 
because you can get two uses out of most of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so we like it for that. Well, where does this go from, you know, once it's mature and been harvested, what's the next step? Well, from here, we have a prep kitchen. Um, most of this will go to the prep kitchen where it's, where it's washed and cut and bagged and then heads out the door. We have a refrigerator. Um, we have several other farmers who are not tenants here, but we have them in the community. They will use our refrigerator to store the food for the market. So like every Friday, we have a pot market that takes place right outside. And, and the pot markets are new. And the people in the community, the response is, is awesome because they just, they just have not had that here. Exactly. This is, you know, Petersburg is a bit of a food desert. Yeah, I hate that word, but that's what it is. Yeah, I, mean, I do it is, too. It is, uh, but we're working to improve that. So tell me, what's the next step? Well, the next step is to, to grow out the business incubator. Uh, we have chickens. We have an a, oh. a egg program coming in. You may hear the roosters crowing in the background, but we, we have some chickens in, but we're building some new coops. Uh, we have a, a tenant that's coming in that's going to run an a, a egg program. Another aspect of farming brought indoors. I love brought it. In, and, and it's just a, an example of how you can repurpose an old building. And indoor ag is, is, is very viable, especially now with the cost of solar panels coming down. Because mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to do this without solar panels. I mean, you look at all the lights and the yes. water and the pumps. We have solar panels that cut our costs significantly. That's wonderful. And it also puts it back on the grid. So we get credits that way as well. That's fantastic. Never thought about that. That's a great idea. Yeah. So that's where we're going. And then uh, after that, we're working on our nonprofit status. Wonderful. And so we, we're, we've started the ball rolling, um, but we have a, 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 there's a lot to do to get there. And so yes. we're, we're working with our partners. And we have this wonderful partnership with all of our nonprofits in the community. Rather than fighting each other, we're working together so that we can get more done. I think it's wonderful. You're using local volunteers. You've got local nonprofits working together. You have local farmers coming in, farming in a very unique way and using buildings that many of us consider to just be old abandoned spaces, but you're giving them new life, giving them a phoenix and all for the benefit of the community. And I applaud you and VSU and the USDA and everyone involved. I think this is a wonderful endeavor. I hope it can continue throughout the state. I really do. That is our goal. That is our dream, to replicate this around the, around the state. That would be great. And Marcus, thank you for having us and sharing with us this new story, this new endeavor. Thank you.